Well, the latest, TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, which now has a deadline to sell its U.S. operations or face the chopping block in its second largest market. Now, President Trump and the GOP are threatening to go after other Chinese companies. Ties between the U.S. and China have been on a downward spiral over national security concerns and the ongoing pandemic, which the president blames solely on China. So what does this all mean for the future of U.S.-China ties? Joining me now from Dallas, Texas, financial expert and co-founder and chief strategist of GDP advisor Seth Denson. Seth, so this tech war seemed to have started off with Huawei. The president targeted that company uh, not too long ago, but Walk us back through time. Why did the president go after Huawei? And what sort of implications is it going to have on the U.S., whether it be uh, consumers or companies? Yeah, the administration largely targeted Huawei and looked at Chinese companies in large part because of their ties to the Chinese Communist Party. And if we think about how quarrels between nations operate these days, in large part, we can talk about cyber wars, uh, they're managed through tech and information. And Huawei's handle on the ability to get uh, their technology into the hands of everyday Americans was certainly a national security concern. Now, what does that mean long term? Well, in large part, it means that maybe consumer electronics and some things that everyday Americans buy could be a little bit more expensive because uh, Huawei prices their products uh, you know, at lower cost and because obviously they may be able to gain access to information, which comes at a price. And that's the big concern, obviously. We've heard the administration say time and time again they, they really want to crack down on the intellectual property theft and making sure China's not stealing our data. Uh, but I, let's go back in time a little bit. So before all of this, I wouldn't say that our relationship with China was was fine and dandy. We definitely had strained ties. We've had strained ties for a while, but it looked like we were doing a little bit better. We were easing into phase one of that trade deal, and then the pandemic happens. From that point on, who's fared better in, in all of this? Well, it's, it's really hard to say because data coming out of China is not all that reliable. And so certainly I think before the COVID crisis, there were key indicators saying that the United States was faring better. Not saying that we were faring great because of the trade war, but we were certainly doing better. Uh, just by looking at the overall export numbers coming out of China. That being said, certainly COVID has played a, a, a key role uh, in negatively impacting the U.S. So when you've got the trade war combined with the COVID crisis, I don't know that we've done worse, but we certainly aren't as good of a position as we were pre-COVID. And based on everything you've seen and heard, what are the chances that the U.S. and China are going to get back to the negotiating table and restart those, those trade talks and jumpstart that deal, or is it dead in the water? Well, I certainly think it's DOA until after the election. Uh, I think that uh, the Chinese government is largely looking at the election and saying they would probably rather deal with a, a Biden administration because of predictability and pliability than they would a Trump administration. Interesting. And why, why do you say that? Well, listen, you've, you've got a track history with, a, with Biden and Obama that, that China can look at and say that certainly they may have fared better under that eight years than they did under the four that a President Trump administration has provided. Interesting. All right. Well, okay, I want to shift gears also before I let you go. We know that we have these uh, stalled stimulus talks in Congress. The president took some executive action hoping to get around that. We still don't really have a timeline as to when Americans are going to be getting that much needed relief. So what can you tell us about that? What does it mean? I mean, the livelihoods of millions of Americans hangs in the balance right now. What, what should lawmakers be doing? What's, what's going on there? Well, I'm certainly more frustrated that Speaker Pelosi thought that an issue with the Postal Service uh, was more of a reason to bring back Congress than stimulus package for the American people. But that aside, my biggest concern here is expediency over accuracy. I mean, Congress seems to want to dole out cash these days like a, a rock star in a nightclub <laughs> rather than someone who's specifically looking at where dollars being spent could be better used. This is our great grandkids money now. We need to be make sure we're being accurate with our expenditures. Well, and it seems to have started off that way. The first time of, of stimulus talks when they had sent, you know, the deal out and it was signed and they sent checks, they said they wanted to see where the money was going and how it was being spent. And all of a sudden, I, I feel like that's sort of been lost in this conversation. Why do you think that is? 
Well, yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. There, it wasn't tracked. And so we don't really know where the money was spent and we're just writing checks. And again, when we're already dealing with the national debt at the level we are, we're combining that with an economy that's shut down by government intervention. More money after this problem isn't always the best thing unless we're very specific at where we're spending it. So targeted spending kind of, I, I definitely need to be better about that as well myself, but we always, always a good tip. All right, Seth Denson, thank you so much for your insights.